We are broadcasting from Nairobi, 94.4. We are in Mombasa on 87.9. 102.5 in Kisumu, Nakuru, 96.0, 96.7 in Eldoret, Nyeri, 90.9 and 97.7 in Malindi. And now for the next two hours, you're also live on KTN Home. Welcome to KTN Home audience. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Now, let's talk about counties and um, what's happening to the counties, especially because they're not receiving any money. So a story today on page four of the standard says counties are raising alarm as June funds have been delayed. June is in the previous financial year, not the current one. So they are saying that they haven't received money for May. They haven't received money for June. July, obvious, because there is a standoff in the Senate about the revenue allocation formula. Uh, and so the, the story here quotes a number of governors, uh, three governors, Amazon Kingi of Kwale, who says, we understand that the ministry is having issues raising revenue. No county has received their June disbursement. This will expose counties to financial problems as it might affect payment of salaries. Mm. Uh, Mandera's Ali Roba says the county got 31 million shillings to pay health workers allowances. This was followed by a circular from the Salaries and Remuneration Commission that all health workers should be paid. Mm. Uh, like EPS Nderito Muridi says, I read deep intrigue and sabotage against devolution. The fight in the Senate appears to be contrived. If some counties are going to be worse off because of the new formula, why not solve it through the Equalization Fund? Now, he is talking about the standoff in the Senate because of this whole new formula. It's called the third uh, base formula, which is now looking at uh, how money shall be divided among the counties in a different way. Uh, different from how it was divided before okay and this standoff has just become a big issue mm -hmm. the counties that have uh, la vast swaths of land right the, and then the fewer pop uh, smaller population have been receiving a lot of money and this is because the formula was factoring in land and the was kind of infrastructure that yes. you require development to develop to reach all the people in that county the new formula is proposing to do a bit a, a bit different and trying to focus a lot more on the population in an area. Also trying to focus a lot more on uh, other infrastructure like health and others, which now starts, it's going to shift things because counties that were receiving a lot more money are going to lose quite some mm -hmm. to a tune of 1.8 billion shillings, as some say, that they're going to lose 1.8 billion yeah. shillings in a financial year, which is a huge amount of money. So this standoff, um, formula was proposed by the CRA, the Commission on Revenue Allocation. It was taken to the Senate. The Senate Finance Committee looked at it. The Senate Finance Committee uh, came up with its own proposals, which was to be discussed last week uh, on Monday. Uh, they did not even discuss it <laughs> because the uh, Senate Minority Leader, James Sorengo, asked the, Sen the Speaker to allow them to go back into more further consultations on this. No senator, like we had the majority whip, sitting uh, telling here last week no senator wants to be the one who's accused of uh, superintending the loss of money to mm -hmm. a county governors are going to use that and say you know look at this senator he was there in the senate and look at how much money we are receiving now we're going to lose some also some governors are saying that this whole delay is a ploy by some senators who want to become governors in the next election to try and Hold back on development by the governors. Whichever way you look at, whichever way, whichever way you look at it, unfortunately, whether you say that no senator wants to be the one that said that one should get more or less than the other, or whether you look at it as it is now, because unfortunately, these folks can't move until Senate does something and gets this sorted out. So whichever way you want to look at it, people are going to point fingers at the Senate. We're not able to pay salaries. We're not able to continue with our development projects within the counties because the Senate has has failed to come up with a strategy or formula that is going to allow all of us then to get money. So whichever way they are pointing fingers, look at what they are being paid their salary. Yes, they are. Look at what Laikipia governor is saying now. I read deep intrigue and sabotage against devolution. And as far as he's concerned, there is a way out of this. There is a way out of it, but then they, they are refusing to take that way. So were it they, could be one that would be blamed or the entire... Were, uh, they, were, were there issues on this matter with the previous allocation plan? The answer is yes. Previous two. Remember, this is the, the last third. two. This, this is, is the third. third. This, yes, is this is the third, third goal they're having at formula. this. Yeah. Yes. The third formula. So in short, mm. there's never been a formula that has been generally acceptable to all the, all the, the, the governors, correct? Mm. Mm -hmm. And they won't be. 
it's not possible to do something whereby everybody is going to be satisfied. It's not possible, especially when you're dealing with things like money and then you're dealing with the fact that um, regional areas of which the counties are made up of are, are not equal. You know the the populations are not equal. You know this reminds so me. So it's not possible. Now, if you had a case where the geographical areas were equal, the population in each and every county region were equal, and then everybody is getting a, a certain amount, then that's the only time that everybody would be satisfied. You know, we started off with this understanding from the very beginning. There were counties that were more populous. There were counties that had more land than they had people. Mm. But it's the same thing. Remember, we were told. At the very beginning, the amount of money, for instance, the judiciary received during mm -hmm. the Kibaki era, there was a lot of infrastructural development that they required. So the argument that came to my mind was, fine, you can't expect that same budget, especially when it is assumed you have put up what you wanted to put up. Mm -hmm. Now, I would argue that if I were to look at counties, I would argue, those who set up the allocation at the very beginning looked and said, you know, some counties are disadvantaged infrastructurally. Yeah. So let's try and get them to a point where the disadvantage is lessened completely. So arguably, how many years have we had? This is our second year, mm -hmm. isn't it? The second, no. So at 10. Se se second, second period. Se period. Sorry, second yes, period. Exactly, yes, seven, exactly, yeah. not a year, second mm -hmm. period. So you assume that during the first five years, some of these things ought to have been brought to a certain level that they weren't before. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're to continue with this argument, then you'd say, indeed, there is need for us to relook at how it is we are going to fund. And it's a constitutional requirement. Yes. And the drafters of the constitution basically had this in mind, that you have this formula and it factors us a couple of things and then you keep changing it because things, have also, things, things keep, keep changing. changing. Yes. Um, so you get to a point now, this third basis formula, and uh, it's, it's been given a whole political twist and, and turns into it and saying that, you know, those counties that are uh, sparsely populated are now being marginalized. We're taking them back to marginalization. Basics of it, the third basis formula, just to give you the parameters. So it looks at f several parameters. It says, uh, look at health and allocate 17% on health. Agriculture, 10%. Population, 18%. Poverty, 14%. A big, basic share for all the counties, 20%. Land area, 8%. Rural access, 4%. Urban households, 5%. Fiscal effort, 2%. And prudence, financial prudence, 2%. Okay? Now, in previous ones, you had issues like uh, population not having a, such a high uh, percentage as 18% because now this one has the second highest after the basic share. You had a land area taking a higher percentage. Now, those that are, come from those vast counties are arguing that, look, we were marginalized for 50 years of this country's since con this country's independence. For 50 years you don't expect that we're going to be able to catch up in such a short time for us to be able to provide uh, health facilities for example we need to look at um, how many people are in this particular area that require a health facility we go and put up that health facility because the next nearest health facility is going to be hundreds of kilometers away hmm. In the densely populated areas, you can say that, yes, this one health facility is catering for a million people, and so you require to build a bigger one, but those, the million people are within a short distance and they can access it. This 100,000 people or 10,000 people that would access this health facility in a vast area would need to still walk many kilometers to access it. Yeah. So <coughs> there's, there's a whole balance of, do we still need money to develop infrastructure from roads to these basic amenities. So the question I would ask is then how many years would these areas need to be able to feel that they have been given sufficient money and sufficient time? And they become independent or even semi-independent. Or to catch up because the, the issue is catching up. Mm. Essentially, they've made this a social, um, what is the word? Mm. Well, the word was in my mind, then it's disappeared. It's gone. Social injustice. Okay. Mm. Yes. That's what they made, the social yeah. injustice issue. Yeah. Yeah. And it is true. Some areas were genuinely marginalized for the very longest time. Mm. But you see, this, the so-called bringing them into the 20th and then 21st century did not begin with uh, devolution. Not really. Mm. No. The Kibaki government came in before devolution. 
Yes, he did. Yes. And within the Kibaki government's time or tenure, these changes that we talk about had begun. It had begun. Mm. Remember, if you go to look at development and progress, I mean, let's look at this thing wholesomely. Yeah? Something like CDF, which was never, never, never available, was available to everybody in the country. Yeah. It was a start. Mm. Then there was a realization, okay, when you have the counties, more money. That, that more money was given. Mm. Okay? This has been my argument. Mm -hmm. With the money that has been given, can we assuredly say that we can say that the development projects that had been planned are commensurate to the money that has been given? Yeah. Hmm. It and has to be asked. It has to be asked. And I think the question in some cases then is quite <laughs> obvious. That it, I mean, the answer rather is obvious that it obviously is not. Um, it has not happened so it, in the manner so the argument which it should have. So it means that even if more money is given, there is no guarantee that the said development projects will again be implemented as suggested. Because, see, we are the level of talk. This is what we need. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm, uh, wrong statement. This is what we want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But as to, this is what we need. Again, remember, th the disadvantages they speak of are real in this sense. Huh? For the longest time, we had provinces and provinces had headquarters. Mm -hmm. And development was actually mostly centered around headquarters. Why? That's where most people were. Mm. Okay? Yeah. But if you, sincerely, if you travel around this country, most of this country, what will surprise you is just how much work the government did in some, in, in the, within the country during those days. Remote places that you would never think would have certain infrastructural development, you would find it. Mm. Now, we lost time and we sort of like clawed back time and started going back into time instead of moving forward. Mm. That's where these things now became a problem and we became glaringly clear that things oh, were definitely wrong. I say this because I've been to some parts of the country where I'm wondering how on earth did this health facility reach here? But clearly it was built. There may be a tree growing right in the middle of one particular building. But it's there. But the it, it was clearly built and somehow it just wasn't used. Mm. I was being told a story by friends of mine who work for the Commission Revenue Allocation that one of the things that they found when they went to Ajir, something very interesting, was the first government built uh, a government headquarters with a sort of like uh, a parliament mm -hmm. 40 kilometers from Ajir. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> goes there. <laughs> <laughs> so the county assembly is basically far, far from the, the old, town. The old county council offices mm. And there's a hotel in town. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember whether it was called the Intercontinental or the Hilton. Mm. That's where you'll find most people in the, in the, in the course of the day. Mm. That the business is transacted. All. That particular structure just sits there. Mm. Nobody goes there. Why? You see, now those are the questions you want to ask. Because if you want to look at, say, for instance... Is it that the members of the county assembly are not facilitated to travel to that 40 kilometers? I mean, surely. They come from wards that are farther than 40 kilometers from the town. They do. You know, now, this is where now social factors and social alignments come in. And why I'm using the word social alignments, I'm trying to use very gentle terms. Huh? Mm. You will also find that there are counties where when you're talking about devolution and how it is they utilize their funds, it doesn't follow what you may think as, as a very scientific method. They follow the method of calling clans and saying, what do you need? Mm. <laughs> no, sincerely, mm. and the money is given. That way you maintain peace. Because if you don't, you, you cannot say the money has been given to the county and then the county decided, mm -mm, the clans decide what they need. Yeah. Now, I'm arguing if it works, fine. fine it works, well fine. Good. If work still if if the work is continuing and it's being carried out, then if that's the method in which you choose to go about it, then it's all right. Now, I think this is where now the shoot the rubber uh, meets the road. <laughs> if the things that were required actually got done, would you really hear this huge hue and cry? There you go. There wouldn't be a lot of back and forth. There always is a but back then, and forth. But you see, if you look at the kind of reaction that you've heard, on this third basis formula. It mainly comes from the counties in the northeastern part of the country. Mm. Okay? Uh, and those ones. And then the others that were... So the ones that were set to lose from this new formula are the ones that are complaining. The yes. ones that are set to gain are sort of like just quiet. So you ask yourself, so why okay. is it that we are not hearing the leadership from these areas coming out to say, look, this is what has been going on. For example, 
we've been talking about you know the case and the argument has there been for, for a very long time look at a county that is neighboring nairobi like uh, kiambu kiambu is for all intents and purposes the bedroom one of the bedrooms of nairobi county it is so very many of the people who come to nairobi during the day on a daily basis go, go back to, to kiambu. kiambu and kajiado and machakos yes they do right so if you look at the infrastructure and the facilities and amenities in kiambu are they is Kiambu County government getting enough money to support the services that ought to be given to these people? The answer would be a no. Okay. Over the last 50 years or so, now we are approaching 60, we'll be in 60 years uh, of independence soon. Over those many years, has Kiambu been getting a lot more um, allocation from the national government for development? I don't know. but How many huge, large hospitals do you have in Kiambu? That you can speak of. That you can speak no? of. Mm. They, they just have ordinary hospitals like any other former... Uh, but accessible to them. Very accessible. Right. And many about other health facilities the level as well. Fives. You've got a thicker level five. You've got Kiambu. You've got other health facilities in the area. Basically, if you compare those health facilities in Kiambu to the health facilities in Wajia... Oh no, the disparity incomparable, is incomparable, I think. Okay. <laughs> but there's a no no, no. folks, <laughs> folks. Uh let's take into consideration some of the factors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hospitals as well as schools, many of them were community effort. Not all. Mm. They're predominantly government, but they were community effort. Similar with schools, mm. community effort, what they call harambe. Mm -hmm. The community feel they need it, so they start it and hope the government will populate it. And the government used to. And they did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, all I'm saying is this. If you come from a place like Northeastern, where even the road getting there was no road. Yeah. Mm. And we know that one of the factors of development, when you talk of infrastructure, is the road. Yeah. Now, so if it isn't there, how are you going to develop? Well, there you go. I think that now it segues to what um, Eric was saying, is that by virtue of the fact that you have some of these counties that are dormitory counties to Nairobi, you would find that the infrastructure then that was needed to develop, by virtue of the fact that they were so close, then it went without saying that some of this infrastructure was developed at a quicker rate than it would be in other counties like mm -hmm. Wajir or Mandera, for example. By virtue of the fact that you had or that you bore proximity to um, the center of things or the center of power, as it were, then the likelihood of your infrastructure being developed at a faster rate than was higher. You know, that advantage began long even before independence because mm. you only need to consider who it is who lived in those areas. Remember, some of the biggest coffee farms we have came from that particular place, that yep. particular region. Mm -hmm. Now, long before we got independence and Africans started owning it, where do you think the people who colonized us were going to focus their efforts when it came to development? Remember, we were natives. Mm. And as far as they were concerned, there are certain things we didn't need. They were not considered basic needs for Africans. Mm -hmm. Ele electricity being one of them. Yeah. Or even a good road. After all, the founders walking through the bush. Mm -hmm. so, 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 You're fine. You so are doing we're, okay. we're good with it, mingling with, uh, with snakes and monkeys. Mm -hmm. So why are we now carrying on fast and, 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 and wanting tarmac roads? Mm -hmm. But the point is this. Huh? This crime must be taken seriously in this light. That that disadvantage... That huge disadvantage actually has to be reduced. But this is the reason why the issue of counties came in. The issue was, we want an opportunity for people to actually have money to develop their own backyard. Yeah. That was the whole idea. Now, this hasn't happened. Forget the story now of them not receiving money. We are in the what? Our seventh year? The last mm -hmm. seven years? Yes. Thank what you. is it that the governments have done? Thank you, Eric. You've to got involve it. the people. You've mm -hmm. got it. That is really the question I'm asking. What is it that they've done for their people? Central government, only problem you'll have with them is they don't give you money. Mm. Mm. But they have been getting money. What have they done? Have, what have they done with it? So now if you want to now lend or borrow from the federal system, whereas you have the central government um, and then you have state governments then, which is like we've looked at before, every state then essentially has their own mini president. And they're not only responsible for governing the land, but what they're also responsible for is upping the economic profile of that particular state. So you must have income generation. You must have, you know, um, um, 
multiple revenue streams for the state, as it were, to then complement whatever it is that you would get from the federal government. So at n never at one point would you find yourself in a state like this, whereby you're saying, well, we're unable to operate, number one, we cannot pay state salary, we cannot pay this, that, the other thing, because we don't have money. Whereas the responsibility was upon you then to create income streams for your state and for your, for your employees. So that whatever you get from federal government is not what you're surviving on. So you as state and you as the mini president, which were now their governors, of that state, you are required then to run certain things. So you go to any state across the, the federal republic and you find that, all right, this is what they have and this is what they have used. This is what they have and this is what they have used. It should not be that after so long you find that there's some people or there's some states that are in abject poverty and they're not able to operate. Why? And they've received money. And they've received money. It you, should not be. You see, why it becomes a talking point is because other counties have received money and you can see what they have what done they have with, done with their it. money. You can see. Yeah. Mm. Even if it is one thing. One, no, no, one, one, see. one. You can, you can see. see. You can see and say, oh, actually, this place is very different. You can actually see. You can see. The mm. people say devolution works. Yes. Because uh, in fact, they, they are delighted with the devolution. Because they can feel, they can feel the effect. They can. They can. And unfortunately... Uh. When you look at the number of governors who have cases with DCI and uh, ethics and anti-corruption over these very matters of managing these money that are given to them, mm. it tells you where the money went and it tells you that the things that they were supposed to do, they clearly did not do. And if you want to go further, then you start to ask yourself the question is that by the time these individuals are being appointed, elected, whatever way in which they got into that election, okay, what was the end goal? Was the end goal then really for the development of the people and the development of the area? Or was it to have a plumb position whereby they could then manipulate to, you know, increase their personal wealth or influence? Actually, and you have to ask yourself that question at the end of the day. Because if believe. it wasn't, perhaps the development that you're crying for, you would have seen it across the country. I actually believe many of these people, believe me, mm. start off with a genuine desire to see change. Sincerely. Because mm. not to believe that, then we would be arguing that we have some of the thickest, most stupid voters on the planet who can be fooled. Some people and would say that is no, the No, it is not true. Some people would tell you it that is not there's true. no... So the candidates begin as they genuinely... Stupid. Genuine people. And even if you look, some of them have a good track record. Some of, believe me, there's something they have done that makes people feel, if this guy gets in, we're He's going to sort us out. So uh, uh, sort uh, I, I, We'll come back and you tell us along the way then what happens. <laughs> Why is it then that we see that uh, the people that are elected, people are very, very feeling disenfranchised with the people that they've elected into office? In the room this and every morning is Eric Latif, Nduoko and C.T. Muga. We broadcast from Nairobi, 94.4. We're in Mombasa, 87.9. 102.5 in Kisumu. If you're in Eldoret, you can catch us on 96.7. Nakuru, 96.0. Malindi, 97.7. Nyeri, 90.9. Anywhere in the world on www.spicefm.co.ke. We also live stream this show on our social media handles, SpiceFMKE, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And this morning, for the next one hour as well, and one and a half hours as well, we are on KTN Home. We are discussing the new revenue formula that has completely split the Senate. They are unable to agree. Politics has crept in. Uh, it has gone into politics of the BBI, politics of NASA versus Jubilee, all man, everything has been thrown into this kitchen sink. In fact, there's even an opinion piece that is uh, published on today's standard on page 16 by a gentleman called Ibrahim Sheikh, who's a resident of Wajir, and he's said to have to be commenting on various topical issues. He is against this formula hmm. completely. In fact, he starts off his uh, opinion piece with this uh, narrative about folklore has it that once there was a man who was herding 99 camels. In the fields, he came across a lonely man who had only one camel. And what did this man do? Without any hesitation or sympathy, he started strategizing on how to obtain the one camel from the herdsman to add to his flock so that his can be 100 camels. And he says, this is exactly what we are seeing now. Hmm. Counties that were previously, you know, getting a lot of uh, funds from the national, from the government, and uh, counties that were not getting any funds from the government, it's 99 versus 1. And now, uh, those counties that were getting the 99 still want to go even for the one. From the counties that were 
historically marginalized. He goes to narrate how, you know, historically the skewed development policies of the colonial era that were largely inherited by the post-independent ruling class and the situation in those counties never improved. He, uh, he ends this piece by saying, a development of a country is always a deliberate process and we should be very deliberate and honest in addressing our national challenges. In that statement, he is absolutely right. Mm. Yes, he he's arguing that you know what uh, this this formula is going to stave and starve very many counties you of see, much needed if, revenue. If people feel mm. they've been ostracized, they will behave in a manner that indicates that they have been ostracized. Uh, it's a feeling that has been felt in the coast, mm. northeastern province, some parts of the western part of Kenya. The Luanyanza area, people have felt that there's a period in the history of this country when they were marginalized. Mm -hmm. Now, there are people even in central Kenya during a period of our history also felt they were being marginalized. Yep. You see, that's where that statement of it becomes true because it has to be a deliberate effort to be aware of our circumstances and our history and to say, we don't want to actually go back to that. So, and maybe this is what the, the senators are struggling with. Mm. How do we at least approximate something that people can live with? But how do we become honest as well with all ourselves, okay? And get to a point and agree, this is what we have done for the last uh, period. Now let's shift focus a bit, try it out for another period so that you can bring these ones up, up to par and then you can reverse. You actually, what's what's hmm. wrong with saying that this third basis formula let's change some of these parameters yes so in the last two basis formulas we were looking at the parameters looking at um, this vastly uh, i mean the large geographical large areas. geographical areas with not a high population mm -hmm. but then we're getting the money so that you can get to par this uh, population these counties with huge populations but smaller in terms of geography not getting as much money okay so at this point let's try and change the other way things the other way around because the population in these counties in western in uh, rift in north rift not just in central because the the conversation has been skewed to appear it's like uhuru is pushing for this formula so that he can benefit his central kenya backyard the bigger beneficiaries are actually in other counties hmm. actually other parts of actually kiambu that people speak of even with this old formula was disadvantaged if we are looking at the disadvantage from the eyeglasses that has been looked at in this one here mm. and yet these projects and their location are not meant for open fields. They are meant for individual people to benefit from. Mm -hmm. So if there are more people, it means their needs will be more. It's, it's really, this is not really complicated. Mm. Okay. Now, if you have a large area and you want many, mm. so are we looking for money to service the area or are we looking for money so that the people who live there who are not that populous can actually benefit? Mm. Now, this is something probably and many others that I can't think of that the, gov that the senators are, are grappling with. Mm. But you don't have to please everyone. You just have to arrive at a point where people can live with. You can say, okay, this we can manage. It's like, at what point is money ever enough for most people? There you go. And I think that's why I agree with Ibrahim in that uh, what he has put out there in mm. that opinion piece is that I think leaders now have, we have to get to the point, leaders must get to the point now where they're being extremely honest, is that the truth of the matter is that with what you get, there is something you can actually do. And we also have to come to the premise that development begets development. Once you begin to develop and honestly oh, develop a certain area, very true. it is very possible for that development to then multiply to by in, virtue of the mm -hmm. to bring in more mm. by virtue of the fact that you have started. But why is it so difficult to get to that point where you actually start and continue that with what you have? Why can't you get there in the why first place? Why can't you get there in the first place with whatever it is that you have been given? Eric, and if you're going to uh, ask the question, why is it that some people then with what they have been given have been able to develop? Why is it? You know, Eric, let's speak to let's speak to the. Uh, mm. Senator from Kitui, and this is Senator Eno Kwambua. Uh, Kitui is one of those counties that, if this formula went through, would lose some money. Mm. All right. Now, let's hear what the, he thinks about this. Senator, good morning. Good morning, Eric. How are you? Fine, thank you. Welcome to the situation room, and thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Thanks for having me. Your work is cut out in the Senate. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm. <laughs> in terms of this particular formula. What do the yep. people of Kitui, you know, because it's the people of Kitui who you heard their voice and they told you to vie for Senate and then they elected you. Yes. What are they telling yes. you now? Uh, thanks, Latif. I heard you saying that uh, Kitui is likely to lose some money. Mm. I, I want to correct that statement. Uh -huh. uh, Kitui 
is going to lose a lot of money <laughs> if this formula goes through. <laughs> Uh, Kitui is supposed to be losing in excess of 432 million Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, lastly, I think it's important that we understand the genesis of, of this challenge. And the first question for people to ask themselves would be, why did we have devolution in the first place in the Constitution uh, 2010? The, the chapter on devolution is supposed to address issues of equitable distribution of resources mm. and sharing of revenue across the 47 counties. The, the disparities in development in sections of this country was brought about by a systematic formula of making decisions at the boardroom in Nairobi for people who are very far away from the center. Mm -hmm. Problems that, that were created by the session of paper number 10 of 1965 on African socialism and its application to planning in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Th that, that's the paper that created marginalized regions because the, the principal argument in that paper was that the national government should put money in productive areas, areas that have high levels of rainfall, areas that have arable land, areas that are easily accessible. And and just by the stroke of the pen, mm. we created marginalized regions. Now, for purposes of devolution, we were supposed to address that very issue to make sure that areas that have been left behind in development are brought to par with areas that for more than 40 years had, had enjoyed uh, a lot of, of allocation of resources from the national government. So today, uh, Latif, without uh, belaboring the, the point, if you, you bring a formula to share revenue among counties, and a count like Mandela is supposed to lose 1.9 billion uh, Kenya shillings. Will there be any count talk about in Mandela, really? Let's talk about the, the, the last two formulas that where the yes. county like Mandela gained 1.9 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. So for seven years of uh, devolution, mm -hmm. the county of Mandela has received 1.9 billion shillings uh, that mm -hmm. we're now looking at it losing. Yes. What was the reason for giving it that extra 1.9 billion shillings? Was it not for, to it's, bring uh, to bring to spur that economic <laughs> that, that development? And, and uh, so so Latif, it was not for seven years. It was for in the last financial year. That's when they they received that amount of money. All right. Previously, they received less. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I I ask I ask myself the question. So if you give Mandela one point nine billion shillings or Kitui four hundred thirty two million Kenya shillings, counties which. We, we have no dispute that they have been marginalized. If you give those counties those monies for one year or two years, are you saying that you've given them too much, now you should stop? You've brought them at par with, with Kiambu and, and Nyeri and, and, and other developed counties? But really? Senator, is it really one year or two years? Have the Quality previous, three years. Have the previous, have the previous <laughs> two formulas not been uh, working to the advantage of these counties? No, but but you know that you know you know you know you know, and I'm very happy that we are having this conversation, Lati. You mm. know, there is something that is coming out. People are not being told that the basis of the disagreement among senators is actually necessarily not 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 the sharing of of the money per se. The challenge is how much money is being uh, shared out. You know, progressively, mm -hmm. uh, the Senate. And uh, under the Division of Revenue Bill, we, we should progressively get more money to counties. Yep. But now what happened in the last financial year is that the Division of Revenue uh, gave us the same amount of money as was given in the previous financial year. Yep. That is 316.5 billion Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. So you have, you, have, you have a small cake or a constant cake that you are supposed to share equitably among 47 children, then you decide, uh, for whatever reason, 
Uh, last time you got uh, 2 million Kenya shillings. This time you will get 1 million Kenya shillings. And yet the amount of money that you're sharing is the same. Do you know what? You're not know lucky. If, if, if the national government gave 340 billion Kenya shillings minimum, we will not be having this conversation. But Senator Wambua, is this not under the assumption that any money that had been given in the past, then there are certain things that would have been done with it. And so in the next allocation of resources, the assumption is that it would be then going, be going towards something else. Sure. I mean, th that's, not, that's not mutually exclusive from what we are discussing. We are just saying that, and by the way, by the way, Make no mistake about this. Devolution has, has, has brought changes in areas where the national government, the central government, would never have done as much as we have done with devolution. Mm -hmm. So if, if a road was done in Wajia, I, I can tell you that the first time a road in Wajia was done under devolution. Yes, and you wouldn't now, require it to be done away, again from scratch. Maybe what you were looking at was then maintenance or repair, <laughs> right? My dear, you know, there, there's not only one road in Wajia. That's, that's it's an example. It's an example that you can use to point to yes. something else. That's, that's, what, I'm saying. that's mm. what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, because you have done one road in Wajia, which is X number of kilometers, you need to do a lot more because there was none. So you don't stop because you, see, you don't say... We gave you 1.5 whatever mil billion. Mm. You did this road, and and you know what? That's it. No, you can't do that. But so, so Senator, um, for how long should this formula remain unchanged? Because it sounds to me that any time, any time mm. this formula tries to change the parameters, and those parameters mm. now appear to disadvantage those counties that will call themselves marginalized. It will mm. always be resisted. No, not 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 necessarily. Um, I, I told you the challenge that we are dealing with. In fact, in fact, at another forum uh, last week, I said, perhaps actually the Senate is fighting a battle that does not belong to it. This battle belongs to the Treasury. These are the people who are supposed to be giving us money to cushion. If you look at the formula that was uh, proposed by the CRA, mm. that formula. I took note of the fact that because of changing parameters, uh, counties will, 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 will lose some money, other counties will, lose, will gain a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So, so KRA in their wisdom, they said, okay, for counties that are losing money, the, 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 the treasury should create uh, a cushion fund. Mm -hmm. So that if, if, if counties are losing, then they are cushioned to the extent of the loss. And that made a lot of sense. You, you know, you know, you, you, <coughs> counties have already done their budgets. They have even passed the appropriation bills. So how do you tell them now, uh, after the, you pass your budget, you've done your, your appropriation, mm. you have access, if miss, uh, thinking that you will get 10 billion Kenya shillings, now you have to readjust, you're going to get 7 billion. How do you, how do you deal with that? Just tell them to do that. I mean... They haven't, no, it will not. They haven't it will not fly because, money. but, but they, have, they have already committed. They have already committed, and there are things you know like recurrent. They already spend money on recurrent. So you, how you recover that? So, you you, you mentioned something like uh, the treasury should have come up with a cushion fund. Yes. In what form or shape would this fund be? What what would it be called? It just that. And does it's a cushion it, fund. Does it not negate the whole purpose of having a formula? If you have a formula that is, no, you know, that the, is the saying formula, that this is how fund. we shall distribute the money, and then okay, the, the, this. the national government comes again and cushions, what's the point? Let's understand. Let's understand this. Let's understand this. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we should, uh, and not just us, all of us in this country, mm. now must move this conversation beyond just a formula because you see the, the wrong impression again we are creating in this conversation is that th this formula has happened on us from 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 the moon you know it's it's something we cannot touch mm. th these formulas are done by people so the cushion fund w would be part of would be inbuilt into the formula mm -hmm. and and you ask me how long would this formula uh, last 
Concessionally, we, we should have passed the third generation formula by June uh, that year. Yep. The last two formulas, they have elapsed. But let me g- tell you something very interesting, and, and this is also something that people are not being told. You know, in India, when they realized that there was a serious problem in the sharing of their revenue uh, among their regions, they, they reverted to the formula that they were using in 1971. To date, hello? Yep. Yes. yes. To date, they are using that formula. So there is nothing that stops us as the Senate of the Republic of Kenya through a resolution to adopt the second generation formula and, make and it use it as the third generation formula. Nothing stops us from doing that. But, Senator, if we were to look at India as an example, India is yes. becoming more and more nationalistic and it has policies that are marginalizing more and more its Muslim population. But that's not what I wanted to ask you. What I wanted mm-hmm. to ask was this. If we look at the monies that have been disbursed to the counties over the years, would you say that those monies have actually been utilized for the purpose that they were intended for? Well, um, my, my answer to you would be, uh, today I have a problem in my county on the management of, of, of public funds. Mm-hmm. That should never stop anyone from giving money to counties. Because that money does not belong to the managers of the funds. That money belongs to the people of Ketri County. And if there's a problem with the management of the funds, then deal with the person mm. who is mismanaging the funds. Because but the have they been managed they properly, about, Senator? That's the question, I think. The, the, have they really of, been of managed course, in, in most cases, not. In mm-hmm. most cases, not. And but would but you say that you that is what then people. gives the impression that the monies that are being given to the counties are not sufficient? So are you saying, are you saying then, because we are, we are, our, our debate is about the formula, mm. then are we saying that the counties that we are supposed to be getting money away from have been so mismanaged and the counties that we are giving more money have been so well managed? Is that the argument? No. That would uh, be simplifying so see, it a little too much. No, 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 no. There's no implication. It's the same thing with... No, the it is simplifying it, uh, there, is, there is corruption. There is corruption in the national government, isn't there? You see, I'm bringing in admission. the topic of accountability vis-a-vis the monies that have been disbursed by the national government. That's really what I'm, I'm trying to ask. That's, and that's exactly what I said. I said in my own county, in fact, there is a pending impeachment uh, process mm-hmm. of mismanagement of county resources. That money does not belong to the governor. That money belongs to the people of Kitui. And if, if it is mismanaged, then we must demand accountability. You don't say that you don't give people money because uh, the governor has mismanaged the funds. No. I actually agree with you. You're punishing those people twice. I agree with you. You don't say that. But you cannot also not neglect it because the image that we have whenever we hear this argument of money being taken or given or money being denied or given is that there isn't much happening in the counties. And I'm trying to say that given what has been received, surely... Shouldn't the counties have seen more for what they have received? That's really what I'm saying. They, they, they should have seen more, but they have seen quite something. That, that I can tell you for sure. Mm-hmm. It is me who said yep. that the first time I could... Senator? It is me who say all the time that, that devolution has created... Mm-hmm. A lot of millionaires in the counties. Yep. People who are just working with counties. <laughs> they, are, they are doing their supplies. They are doing their roads. They are doing their contracts. Yeah. The evolution has changed lives in the counties. There is one thing you can never take away from Kenyans. Even if you are going to do a referendum or anything, mm. you can never take away the evolution from that. That's true. Let's talk about Kitui as we conclude the conversation for the next about one minute. What is it that's happening in Kitui and what's the way forward? Uh, last if I lost you a bit. About Kitui Sorry, and the, the move by the MCA is to impeach the governor of Kitui County. That that flopped last week. Uh, what is it that was happening and what's the way forward now? Well, I'm not really sure about flopped. I, I'm very sure that uh, it did not, the process did not begin. Mm-hmm. Um, what I am advised happened is that um, uh, some some members of the county assembly uh disappeared only them can say how that happened mm-hmm. um 
and, and so I think the majority leader, who was the owner of the motion, uh, chose not to table it on the day that he was supposed to. Mm-hmm. I, I think what he did was just a tactical retreat. Uh, I have spoken to him. He has advised me that uh, in the fullness of time, he will be uh, tabling the motion. Okay. I think we'll have a longer conversation on um, the goings on, the devolution in Kitui County. At some other time, we understand that you're heading into a meeting this morning to discuss yes. more about uh, this formula and other works of the Senate. Thank you yes. very much for speaking to us, uh, Senator Inokwambua of Kitui County. Thanks, Eric. Um, it was a pleasure uh, speaking to you this morning. Santa Sana, have a good day. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Thank you. you. Just listening to the Senator. Um, just from the very beginning by saying we are going to lose a lot of money. And all the senators who are complaining, I mean, they're going to lose a lot of money. It clearly means that nobody is willing to seed ground. You know, if only, if only I could believe that the concerns were altruistic. Mm. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I do not. Because we are discussing politicians and the deliberations that politicians are having about their respective counties mm. and the understanding that very many of these senators want to be governors. You know, what would make me truly happy is that with all of this debate and these deliberations, if we had somebody saying, you know what, last time I was able to do this, that, the other thing, just an example of what I'm bringing this forward. And this is what is hanging in the balance. I have a hospital that cannot be completed. I have a number of outfits that I'm trying to put in place. We started the show talking about um, some of the things that have been done in Laikipia, for example, with the innovations, with the vehicles, etc., etc. I have a project like that that's on ground for you to understand that I may have vast geographical space, but there's something that I'm trying to do for the people. And I have these things pending right? It would be nice to hear things like that and say, this is the reason then why I require more. Not to say, not to give a blanket statement that, yeah, well, you know, a lot has been done. We expect and hope that more will be done. No, no. I think it's necessary at this point to give it some give it some life, give it some give it some meaning, give it something that people will be able to understand and say, okay, actually, for the money. Yeah, absolutely. This is actually <laughs> what we're dealing with. And you know, we often say, well, yeah, politicians would never do something like that. Well, I think it's about time you have to call them and say, you know what? It is necessary that you actually tell people they can this is actually, actually what is going on. We looked at their, their development uh, programs and they, if they went down and started auditing and saying, this is what our CIDP was saying that we wanted to do within mm-hmm. five years. And this, this is what our plan is for next yes. year. And this is why we presented a budget to the county assembly seeking extra funds and extra uh, uh, authority to dip into the into the funds so that we can continue this project. They would do that. The point is, however, that uh, this is one side of a country and then there's another side of the country that's feeling, I could have done more had I received a bit more. Okay, but with the one that you had, the question is then, with the what one that you, you had, what have you done? You know, that is a question that no one wants, Nobody to, respond, wants to answer. respond to directly yeah. because what is obvious is that Kenyans have seen monies going to the areas they come from, money that the areas have never, ever, ever, ever received. Yeah. Yeah.